So, a lot of you are probably questioning, why did the armor force Mando to go to poisonous Mandalore and dunk his head into the water beneath the mines in order to be redeemed while she lets Bo-Katan take her helmet off and just kind of do whatever she wants? Well, the reasoning still may have you roll your eyes, but there is a reason, so let's discuss it. Let's go all the way back to Season 1, where the armorer spoke of a new era that would come to be when a Mandalorian rides a mythosaur, the long-extinct creature, or thought to be extinct until, of course, Bo saw it. The armorer mentions that this would be the dawn of a new day, and a time where Mandalorians would unite under one new clan, kind of abolishing all of the old rules and just giving way for a new one. Whoever tames the mythosaur shall claim this honor, and I think this goes way above having the Darksaber. I feel now that Bo-Katan has seen a mythosaur, the armorer feels that she is the Chosen One, and I think this whole thing is just kind of another Jedi Chosen One sort of prophecy, except for Mandalorians. You know, where they just believe in their prophecy that this would foretell a new age of Mandalorians, and this is essentially fate meant to be. This is also what she mentions to Bo at the end of Episode 5, Season 3. Bo-Katan has walked as a Death Watch member, a Night Owl member after that. She's walked with her sister, the new Mandalorians, and now as a member of the Children of the Watch. She is now tasked with going around the galaxy and finding other Mandalorians, bringing them back to Navarro 7 and uniting them all under her watch. Bo-Katan's ultimate goal is to unite all of the Mandalorian clans under one banner and to restore the ancient way of life that the Mandalorians once enjoyed. She believes that this can only be accomplished through a combination of military might, diplomacy, and strong leadership. In order to unite all of the Mandalorian clans, Bo-Katan will likely need to continue to build alliances and gain the support of other influential Mandalorian leaders. She may also need to overcome any internal divisions within the Mando culture and find a way to reconcile different factions, so she's going to have to be very diplomatic when doing this. Ultimately, Bo's success in uniting all of the Mandalorian clans will depend on her ability to inspire others with her vision and to lead by example. It will also require a willingness to compromise and negotiate with other groups while staying true to the core values and traditions of the Mandalorian people. I think there will be a major power shift, as Bo-Katan is the bridge between the different Mandalorian tribes. She told Mando that her tribe of Night Owls and Mandalorians are making their way through the galaxy as mercenaries, so they all kind of abandoned her. I think she's now going to go out and find those mercenaries and convert them. Now my question here is, what is she going to tell them? That she saw a mythosaur and all of a sudden everyone will be entranced to join her? Or can she say that we're all now welcome back on Navarro 7? It's going to be difficult to convince everyone to join her cause. However, I think the purpose here is to just get as many willing Mandos as she can to increase their collective size and her new way of old and new. Once they do this, they'll all head to Mandalore, as the armorer mentions, and then they'll retake it. And from there, I think Bo-Katan will try to tame the Mythosaur and ride the Mythosaur on Mandalore. I think it'll be very difficult for many other Mandalorians to accept her now that she's removed her helmet. I think many may even question the armorer's ability to lead after allowing such a thing to happen. This could cause civil war where those loyal will fight for her and the rest will scamper off making their own new faction, a splinter group, much like Death Watch. The other issue here is that she may come across Moff Gideon and the Mandalorians who helped him escape, the ones who are working for him. Assuming, of course, that that wasn't a setup with the Beskar. She may try to convert them to her cause, and then she might get captured by him and forced to reveal the location of the others. This could, of course, end very badly for the armor and for Din and everybody else. Din may require the help from somebody, maybe Boba Fett comes in, or even a Force-sensitive like Ahsoka, or perhaps Luke could come back. Overall, I do think it's kind of funny that Bo is allowed to take her helmet off so easily now. It seems like the faith of the armor has been shifted, or at least she's a little more open-minded now. What kind of also alarms me is that she's so willing to just believe Bo based on the fact that she saw a mythosaur. I mean, what if she's lying? She doesn't really know much about Bo. But then again, that's really kind of the beautiful thing about the Children of the Watch, is that they all work on some sort of an honor system, like the samurai. They don't lie at least to one another, and they work through honor and code. Just like when the armor asked the Mando if he has removed his helmet in front of everyone, 
and he didn't lie. He could have, but he didn't. I think the children of the Watch have a very strong code of ethic, and they just don't lie to each other, and I think this makes things a lot more easy and transparent with just their everyday way of life. So this is why Bo-Katan was allowed to take her helmet off. I think it's going to be really weird that she's going to be able to take her helmet off in front of everybody, including the children of the Watch, while they cannot. I think eventually what's going to happen is Bo will lead all of the Mandalorians, or at least a, a massive group of them, and she'll have them all take their helmets off because she just doesn't care for that stuff. And possibly may even start to make things a little more like Death Watch and how they used to be. Now, I could see a lot of the Maul DeLoreans, the ones that were loyal to Maul, having some issues with Bo-Katan, if any of those guys do exist still. But beyond that, I don't really think there's too much of an issue that Bo will run into. Except for, you know, maybe some disillusioned Mandalorian leaders of their own clans and tribes, where they just kind of want to do their own thing. Either way, I'm glad that they're now leading into more of an exciting story of the Mandalorian. I was waiting for this, so I'm glad we got it. Hope you guys enjoyed my video on it, and I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you.